Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm here with Umesh from Amcor, uh, and we're discussing the upcoming SEMI event, uh, the Global Smart Manufacturing Conference, which will take place later this month. Umesh, just start with a quick introduction to yourself um, and Amcor for those that those that don't know everything they need to know about you. Oh, very good. Let's start with Amcor first. Uh, Amcor Technology. We are the leading outsourced semiconductor assembly and test provider, um, uh, global manu uh, manufacturing company uh, worldwide, tier one OSAT player, mm -hmm. uh, factories in 11 countries, 20 plus factories, um, working on all our uh, leading edge advanced packages as well as mainstream packages. Uh, and my role uh, here at Amcor is I'm global CIO, um, working with all our IT organizations worldwide, including factories, corporate, and all the entities. Okay. And it's really interesting, I think, that the CIO role has become more and more important over, over recent years and has really become one of the key roles with respect to the implementation of, uh, of Industry 4.0. It is really that merger that crossover between operations and IT and that's that's where it be where where the rubber really hits the road and I guess that's what's going to come up in this uh, in this conference specifically your presentations entitled transformation from automation to intelligence through industry 4.0 just kind of set the scene for me what are you going to be talking about in that presentation yeah so um, I think uh, the 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 audience uh, in a semiconductor industry are very familiar that uh, most of the good, good chunk of manufacturing is fairly high tech automated mm. for a long time. We all work with uh, expensive automated equipment, uh, but the, now what is the call of the duty really is taking it a step further, going from a sheer automation to adding the intelligence layer. Yeah, and uh, that is what is our industry 4.0 program is. Um, we think we are good at automation, the physical raw automation, um, but then we are adding the new technologies that takes it to the intelligent level. And yeah. I can explain more about what intelligence is. Uh, the way we define intelligent factories are, the factory is not only automated, but they are connected to each other. Yeah. The equipment are connected to backbone systems. There is a lot of data collection, and then there is a lot of data-driven decision-making done on the factory uh, uh, lines, yeah. along with the use of all these advanced technologies such as cloud, uh, artificial intelligence, yeah. and so forth. Yeah. So that is what yeah. we are talking about, the transformation from automation to intelligence. Yeah, and I think it's a very important stage. And when I look at what we can do now, there are kind of some fundamentals. And as you say, automation is one of them. And we, when we look at semiconductor or we look at SMT, we see very automated lines and very automated processes. Then there's a stage of actually extracting data from those data that can be meaningful. And I think we've started to get to that stage where connectivity and data acquisition is very, very doable. Right. But what we've got to do is take that data and turn that into actionable intelligence and intelligence that can improve the process. Where do you think we are in that process? Um, I think we are, we are well underway uh, in capitalizing those technologies um, because IoT on industrial IoT is very uh, mature quite a bit. We are able to mm -hmm. connect pretty much every single piece of equipment and collect a lot of data. Uh, then all the other technologies about the big data analytics as well as the uh, uh, artificial intelligence for uh, whether it is uh, speech recognition, pattern recognition, image recognition, mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, those are fairly mainstream now. And so I think as far as its application, there is a long way to go. The manufacturing factories are still 
adopting it at early stages, but the technology itself is is fairly proven now that we can yeah. deploy it for mass scale factories. Yeah. And are you looking at extracting intelligence for process or is it business intelligence or is it a combination? Yeah. So, I mean, business intelligence is an abstract of all the all the product data collection, process mm -hmm. data collection, whatever is happening on the factory floor. So in this industry 4.0, there is a term called digital tweet, yes. which really means basically that everything you are doing physically, there is a digital representation of every transaction, every movement, every action that is happened in a physical space is mm -hmm. now available in digital space. That includes people, process, technology, movement of the material, everything. And so that all that information then collected and analyzed in real time drives the business intelligence at the higher level. Yeah, yeah. And when I, whenever I look at the industry 4.0 trends, and I've been you know, following this for, I guess, getting close to a decade um, now, one of the things that seems to hamper progress is this idea of a digital dividend where where's the value coming where where is it going to add value to the customer to the consumer to the manufacturer do you see that as fundamentally important in your role figuring out actually what can we achieve with this it's not just a question of doing it because we can it's doing it because we need to because we're adding value to our customers because we're making a better business from it well as a business, we would never do anything that does not add business value. Mm -hmm. And that drives the real tangible value. Uh, so no, we are doing this not because we have to or because everybody else is doing, because we see a great v value we would get. And I will give several examples. So all these technologies we are talking about, whether it is automation or whether it is IoT or big data analytics, uh, they are driving quality uh, of the process, quality of the products uh, in a tangible way. Mm -hmm. That's a step function quality improvements we can see. It is also helping us with the productivity, not only of the human productivity, but as well as the productivity mm -hmm. of our assets and resources on the factory floor. Because we're talking about um, semiconductor factories, very, very capital intensive factories. Mm. So we are seeing, we, we will see the tangible benefits in product and process quality, see the products uh, benefits in productivity, both human and asset productivity. Uh, We're also seeing a great value in what we call the intelligence about is speed and quality of decision making. Mm -hmm. That is really the intelligence is uh, how do we collect the data, analyze it on the fly, on the factory floor. In real time. And drive the real time decisions mm -hmm. uh, by correlating data from multiple data sources of multiple types of data and driving the decisions so that the equipment or the manufacturing lot does not have to wait for an engineer to make a determination before yeah. that can be moved. So yeah. we're seeing a huge value in speed and quality of decision-making. And all of that turns it into a better asset utilization, better customer satisfaction, and ultimately the cost. Um, yeah. So yes, we, 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 we are seeing the signs of a good value because these things yeah. are not, not inexpensive. These cost yeah, money. And so we wouldn't yeah. do it unless we see a good tangible business value. Yeah, and that makes, per that makes perfect sense. Um, Umesh, and, and you can, I can see that you know one of the ultimate goals is better and faster decisions. And if you were, you're making better and faster decisions, it's going to improve quality. It's going to improve um, uh, performance in terms of efficiency and general operating performance. So those those things are absolutely essential. Right now, we're in a position in the market where supply chains have been massively disrupted. We had disruptions from the trade war, then we had the pandemic, and now we have component shortages. It feels like disruptions are the only thing that we can be sure we're going to get right now. And there's a lot of talk about supply chain security, supply chain resilience, supply chain adaptability. 
is this digital transformation and this layering of intelligence expected to help that? Will it make our businesses more agile? Will it make us more responsive to these kind of disruptions in the future and provide us with better planning? I think so. Um, I think um, the, 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 the fundamental value of any connectivity and information is it drives better quality decisions in a timely manner, not only just on a factory floor, but across the supply chain. So all these uh, things we are talking about on the technologies using uh, the uh, uh, industry 4.0, uh, those are adding a tremendous value, will be adding tremendous value in this highly volatile disruptive supply chains. Mm -hmm. uh, see, for example, another, we, we, have a, we have our program, Industry 4.0 program, based on eight different pillars. And one of the pillars is cybersecurity. Yeah. Because, because the kind of intelligent factory and intelligent supply chains we are talking about those, those are all information driven uh, factories. Mm. And cybersecurity is very critical because information is the main ingredient in this intelligent supply chains. Yeah. And so the cybersecurity, not only within our four walls, but also across the supply chain, is of utmost importance because we're talking about transmitting the information in real time across the different factory floor as well as across the different segment of the supply chain. Yeah, yeah. So it's really a question of creating, you know, creating, it's that digital twin again, isn't it? It's having that digital picture of the entire supply chain, the whole ecosystem and being able to simulate and, and you know, create vision as you go forward. It makes perfect sense. Um, last question before we wrap up, Umesh specifically on the event, which is October 19th to 22nd, what would you say to people that are considering attending and considering listening to your keynote? What would you say to encourage them to uh, sign up and, and come along to the, to the semi-event? I think this will be a great event. Um, from my perspective, we will be showcasing um, the, the cutting edge technology, a use of that technology in hmm. solving the real world problems and taking the factories to the next level. Again, I would say uh, people are fairly familiar with the automated factories We're using yeah. material handling, ASRES, robotic equipment and all that. What we're talking about with industry 4.0 is a different type of smart factories hmm. that are data driven and uh, anybody who is striving to really take their factories to the next level uh, from automation to intelligence, uh, this is gonna be a place to hear from all the different uh, experts about how they are using these technologies in real life. Um, yeah. Nothing we talk about is academic only. This is all, everything I'm presenting is what we do in Amcor uh, in real life. So. Yeah. I think that would be of a great value to a uh, lot of attendees and I hope um, uh, more lot poor people attend. Yeah, no, I think it uh, I think it is a very compelling story and a very compelling event. And as you say, seeing real life examples of people that have deployed it and have achieved value from it is um, is hugely, hugely important. Do you think the semiconductor industry is one of the industries that's perhaps um, embraced industry 4.0 more than others. I know, for example, the automotive industry has done very well in that space, but other industries perhaps in, in more, more um, heavy industries seem to be a little bit slower. Do you think the semiconductors are a bit of a trailblazer? Um, I think I've been in semiconductor industry for a long time and semiconductor industry has always been a trailblazer on a lot of leading edge technologies, whether it is uh, PLC controllers of the 80s or whether it is the robotic equipment or um, any advanced technologies. I think automotive industry, the semiconductor industry, uh, they are always a trailblazer compared to some of the other traditional industrial mm. manufacturing giants. So 
um, this is not unexpected. Um, yeah. And because again, the semiconductor industry has a huge capital uh, requirements, um, the, the asset um, as capital intensive industry. And so they can really benefit from like in this example, even a 1% increase in our asset utilization yeah, drives the significant huge. value to us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so yeah, I, I think they are a bit of a terrible measure, just like automotive industry too, uh, but they always have been. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It makes it it makes the event very attractive to everybody in the semiconductor industry, but also in other industries that I think can can see what's going on in your industry and um, and benefit from looking at some of those examples. Umesh, good luck with the event. Good luck with your keynote. I, I'm looking forward to to hearing it and talking to you afterwards in a little bit more detail. But in the meantime, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks a lot.